Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve. This is what we're going to be talking about today is how a crankshaft is balanced. And so we're going to go through all the steps of how it's balanced, why it's balanced, and uh, what you're actually accomplishing here. And uh, just to give you an idea so you understand what's going on and what's all entailed into it. And uh, why sometimes it's going to cost a lot of money to balance crankshaft. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the cheaper version. Sometimes it goes real quick, a lot of times it doesn't. So, anyways, let's start over here with what you need to do. So, our first process is we are always trying, uh, we're gonna balance all of our individual components together. Now, uh, in the aftermarket world uh, with uh, connecting rods, uh, really good high quality pistons, high quality connecting rods, uh, these things they are extremely close together. I mean if they're if they're within a gram I don't even touch them. That's not even worthwhile to do. So What we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the bob weight so <clears throat> You cannot just throw a crankshaft in here in the machine and spin it without having some form of simulation of what the piston rod and everything weighs So let's go over and start talking about the bob weight so our bob weight consists of what is connected to the crankshaft, what is spinning around, you know, this is going around, and what's going up and down. That's going up and down. All right. So our anything that is rotating around is called rotating weight, and anything that's going up and down, i.e. the piston or the small end of the rod, is called the reciprocating weight. So first thing we're going to do is we go over here to our bob weight number. And uh, other machines might have other things to do. Uh, they, you can even have a piece of paper similar to this where we can, uh, you know, the piston weight, pin weight, rings, and all this stuff. So everything that is right up here on the screen. So we're going to enter in all that stuff. And so what we want to do first is we're going to do the connecting rod big end. So we got zero out our scale. Actually, let's do it this way. We're going to zero out our scale. We use this fixture, which is allowing us to just weigh the big end of the connecting rod. The rod needs to be parallel. The small end of the connecting rod is suspended out here. Everything is on a little roller, so it will self, self excuse me, will self center itself. All right, but nice and level. Everything's right there. We can come in we go okay our connecting rod weight is a uh, 424.6 so we'll come up here we'll go 424.6 enter all right now the next weight it wants to know and we'll do this step by step so you're seeing exactly how, what it's asking us and, and exactly why we're doing this so that's the main part of rotating weight as you can see right here this is all rotating weight Anything that is connected directly to the crankshaft and goes in a circular direction, rotates. Next thing it wants to know is your bearing insert. Bearing inserts. Our inserts are 40.9. 40.9. All right. The next thing, so it gives you a grand total there. It wants to know how many throws or rods per throw. So obviously on the V8, we're going to have two connecting rods per throw. Four cylinder, we'll talk about that in a second. Obviously, you only have one. And then uh, straight sixes, some of those other options would might have a different rod throw configuration. Now, we're just showing you how to do for uh, the typical V8, domestic V8. Uh, there are some crazy rod journal designs uh, that are out there, but we're not going to be covering those right now. All right. So it's asking you, it gives you how many throws per cylinder. So it's just times in those two. So your big end of the rod, the bearing times two, because we've got two rod throws or two uh, connecting rods on each throw gives you a total. And then it even wants to ask you what the uh, oil weight is. Cause yes, there's oil weight that is in there. So typically we're going to be in between three and five. Most all the time we're just using five for that number. So that's actually the oil that is inside the connecting rod journal from the center of the crankshaft out to the connecting rod journal and oil that thin you know two thousandths two and a half thousandths three thousandths of oil film that is right there all right 
So that gives us our rotating weight. All right, now we're gonna start figuring out our reciprocating weight. So our reciprocating weight, first thing we're gonna look at is the connecting rod small end. So small end or pin end if you wanna call it that. Okay, so now we do the same thing where we're just gonna zero out our scale. We flip this around and now we're weighing the, get this level. There we go. All right, make sure that everything is square in there so it's not giving us any bogus reading. And let's uh, zero this out. There we go. And we're at 177.5. 177.5. Enter. All right. Now it's going to be asking us for a piston weight. So I'll take this off. We're already zeroed up there. Now we have done the complete connecting rod. And when you do this correctly, you weigh the big end, you weigh the small end. You can do a total weight on the rod. The total weight is 602.3. And we can look on there 424 and 177. We'll add this together on the old calculator. Uh, 177.5 plus 424.6 equals 602.1, 602.3. So I'm just off like a decimal place. That way we know that we have correctly weighed and had the, the rod balanced properly. If you had the ang angle real wrong and you had it down like this, it actually skews your balance and changes things. So that's why we always want to have it nice and level. And the, the quick check is to see Yep, the thing weighs exactly what both halves weigh together. All right, now we weigh our piston. Just the piston. 520.4. All right, we're at 520.5, but we'll just change it. 520.4, enter. All right, now it wants to know what our uh, pin weighs. Piston pin is 184.2. That's already entered in there. Now this particular piston has pin buttons. So if you're not familiar with pin buttons, we'll probably cover stuff like this later in one of the other videos. But that goes in there. And what it does is it simulates, uh, provides support for the oil ring. And actually pin buttons are actually nicer. I kind of like them better than a support rail. But they do add a little bit of weight weight is not super critical in this and I'll tell you about that in a second after we get our bob weight number. So that's 17.6 is what the pin buttons weigh, one on each side. So that holds the pin in from going anywhere. So the piston pin is in behind there. This supports the rail. It sits out there nice and flush exactly like that. So this is what it's called, it's called a pin button. All right, then we weigh our rings. 51 grams. Oh, these are, when we use the pin button, that means we don't use a spiral lock or don't use any kind of clip out here. So the two ways of doing it, a spiral lock, or a spiral lock with an oil support rail or a pin button. Those are two methods of supporting that oil rail and holding the uh, piston pin from going back and forth. All right, so that gives us all of our reciprocating weight that equals uh, 950 grams. So, our total reciprocating weight is uh, 1901. You get that number because that is times what? How many pistons and small end of the connecting rod are going up and down, right? So, ironically enough, it gives us our total reciprocating weight, which is uh, 1901. But even though there is two going on, they are opposed from each other. At one is going up as the other one's coming down. So as they are opposed from each other, you actually divide that number by two, which gives us our total reciprocating factor of 950.7. So our 950.7 plus our 936 gives us a grand total of 
1886 is our bob weight. So that's what's getting simulated there. Now if we changed our balance factor from 50% to 51%, which is an overbalance, or 49%, which is an underbalance. So if I change this number right here, now let's watch our number. Our bob weight is 1886. If we change this number to 49%, for an underbalance, it changes our weight to 1867. If we change it to overbalance to 51%, it changes it to 1905. So see how much we're changing our bob weight. These these engines will run at 50, 49, 48%. They'll run at 51, uh, 52% very easily, and you'll never, you literally don't ever know it. Point blank. Um, and there is a little bit of math and there is a little bit of things that like comp eliminator, uh, pro stock guys, Winston Cup guys will underbalance or overbalance because uh, in a underbalance situation, they tend to uh, ex vibrate less, hey, they tend to accelerate better. In an overbalance situation, they tend to h maintain high RPM better. So you're actually not balancing it, quote unquote, correct because this is the generally accepted SAE method 50% so uh, as racers we can change and manipulate those bob weights so we're actually making it way less and actually putting it out of balance by giving it over balance or under balance trying to achieve a better accelerating or a better better high rpm deal in general 50% is for everything that we do in big horsepower uh, big RPM, big horsepower stuff is great. Has no problem. Okay. So we have our bob weight number. Now we come in and we simulate and build that bob weight. So here's what the bob weight looks like without any weight on it. So we then say, all right, this thing needs to be um, half. Oops. So it gives us, our machine gives us half of a bob weight so we can do one half at a time or you can just do the whole thing at a time. So I prefer to just do it the whole thing at a time. All right, so these are just the little speed nuts. Make sure our gauge starts out at zero, scale is zeroed. So obviously we're gonna put the same weight on each side. So first off, we put that on there. That's 1424. That's 1683. 1770. Let's see, I think we'll do it this way. 1873 our bob weight number is supposed to be 1886 so we'll just do whatever it takes in order to make that weight and do it equally on both sides That's 83, now we'll be at 86. There you go, 1886.9, we're supposed to be 1886.7, so we're not gonna worry about that two tenths of a gram. All right, so we're at, like I said, we're at 1886.9. It's 1886.7, not gonna worry about that because, let me show you something here. 1886.9, here's this uh, post-it note, all right? That just changed it almost a gram, eight tenths of a gram. Okay, this is eight tenths of a gram. It's just a post-it note. Okay, so keep that in mind as we were doing this on what that weight is. I mean, that's a uh, almost a gram right there. All right, so we would then put their bob weight together, just like we already have all these bob weights put together. You need to locate it on the crankshaft. And what we're trying to do is we always get that number one rod throw right straight up and down. 
there's a little bit more art than science here. There is some different kind of bob weights that you can use that you can uh, uh, build with. And so we have this one because there is a full round bob weight, which is a pretty neat deal. And because they're actually trying to get away probably from having any windage out here, but let's keep that, <laughs> keep that in mind still windage and see that post-it note how much that weighs and it's just a piece of nothing all right so uh, each one of these things is going to go on at 90 degrees from each other because obviously it's 90 so we square this up go to the next one that's it leveled off do the same do the same so they're all 90 degrees away from each other same orientation so everything is similar to each other all right now we have the crankshaft we have the bob weights in there we need to go through and you're going to enter in all the information the machine needs to know how far away the bearing is from the other bearing 19 inches on this small block what our tolerance is that's what the machine needs to know and then it's going to uh, do it in a force or plane uh, it's always in a plane because we're on two different sides right here all right so everything's all set up the machine is ready to balance we've already gone over what our bob weight is how we make that bob weight what that bob weight means and our overbalance and underbalance so we're a standard conventional 50 percent bob weight this works the best to do this from when i was in nhra pro stock a long time ago to doing uh, pro modified style mowers uh, big blowers big horsepower big turbo stuff this stuff works perfectly okay so we're gonna balance this at 500 rpm that is a typical standard balancing rpm you can balance it some other rpms it does not seem to have any bearing if the machine is good it's gonna balance at 500 rpm and pick up the balance as much as it does at 700 rpm or a thousand rpm now <clears throat> when you see how fast this is actually turning you'll see 500 rpms a lot so imagine what's going on when this thing is at 1,000 RPM, not even idling. Imagine what this thing is at at 10,000 RPM, how fast stuff is moving. So this is at 500 RPM. What the machine is now doing is there's load sensors that are in each one of these columns. So it is picking up any type of vibration, any kind of movement that is uh, outside his range, then it measures that. So we can see right here that we are 41 grams out in the front. We're 25 grams out, 24.5 grams out in the rear. Now, it's also, this is a position indicator that's telling us what position we need to be at. So we come up here and we're gonna do uh, add, because I know it needs to be added to. All positions are at 12 o'clock. So straight up and down is where it's giving you the calculation at, or straight down below, because the load sensor is right there. All right, so we come over here. It says, yep, I wanna add 41 grams, 41.4 grams at this position, which is right here at the exact 12, or 12 uh, spot. Now, because this crankshaft was already balanced, it's a used crankshaft that we're changing the piston, uh, piston into. We're, and you can see that all we did was change piston. So whenever this was balanced from before, there was actually a 20, almost a 20 gram difference front to rear because our pistons are all the way the same. We're using the exact same connecting rod, everything he already had. So it should have been the same front to rear. So whoever did the balance on it before was 20 grams off front to rear. So what we wanna do is we're going to add weight. And since it's really hard to figure out how to add weight, if it was asking us to remove weight, we'd come over here to the drill. We'd come right to the spot. We would machine a nice hole, sneak up on it, get close, come back over here, get close, come back over here, get closer, come back over here, get closer yet. Uh, or we can put it up in a lathe and we can do uh, balance the counterweight by machining all the counterweight. Uh, we can machine uh, inside this hole here, this uh, this plane, this plane, or this plane. 
doesn't really it this plane does the most this plane does the least now this is all also uh, very few things in the world are externally balanced anymore all good race engine stuff is always internally balanced so we don't have to have the balancer we don't have to have the flywheel or flex plate out here um, those things are neutral balance which means uh, good quality stuff is always uh, no weight to it it is uh, it's perfectly balanced it's just a round piece of machine material for the, the flex plate it's a round piece of machine uh, on a lathe uh, balancer there's no sense even putting it on here you can if you want to there's nothing wrong with doing that but we never remove or add material on the balancer or the flex plate you always do it in the crankshaft because we want to be able to change a balancer we want to be able to change the flex plate without having it be go in and rebalance everything so that's why you always do all your balancing in the crankshaft not on the flex plate not on the flywheel not on the balancer we want to be able to just interchange those that's why zero weight stuff internally balanced is all interchangeable we can change we can put 50 different balancers on here and it's never going to change the balance of the crankshaft because the manufacturer has made the balancer zero okay so we know that now that we've made our bob weights we've spun this up we are now going to start making our correction and since this thing is asking us to add weight we can't just easily do that and sneak up on it so I like to simulate it by just a simple little thing like this what this material is that you see right here these a uh, little different color now this is used so these were already in there and there's one here that's called Mallory metal now Mallory metal or heavy metal is heavier than what the steel is by quite a bit there's some charts and we have everything to figure that all out but if we need to add metal we don't weld on stuff we don't weld pieces in there and do all that's a lower end way of doing things so what we always do is we have to take we simulate what weight needs to be there we'll show you the simulation so this is 40 grams and we're calling for uh, 41 and a half grams. Let's add here, see what this does. That's 44. I think we're gonna actually just test it with this first and I can show you what it's gonna be. So we're gonna put 40.6 grams right where it's asking us to, right where we would end up machining a different piece of round Mallory metal that will press into this crankshaft and it presses in this way impossible for any weight to come out as the crankshaft rotating around if it is pressed in from the side now if somebody comes in here and they just weld a hole shut uh, a lot of times what will happen or can happen is that thing will actually uh, I've seen pieces of weld fly off of it from the centrifugal force fly off of it shoot through the oil pan and oil down your trap i.e. oiled on tires probably put in a guardrail okay so that's why we always want to do put Mallory metal in from the side if we need to add weight we use Mallory metal in from the side so you come and take a look at that again you can see that there is no way for that thing to come out it's we press it in there and then most often I'll actually add a little bit of weld on the outside here just for added, added security that even when we press it in a little bit of weld there to make sure that that thing is never going to slide back and forth Okay, so we put 40 grams here. Now we rotate this over to where it tells us to take and add. Whoops, I forgot to tighten it up. All right, this time I remembered to tighten the thing back up. So we go to the back of the crankshaft. Go to where it's telling us to put it, right there. So we're again, we're simulating this bolt we know weighs. 24.2 it's asking us for 24.5 we're going to simulate and put that in there right in this spot right at 12 o'clock I will tighten this up and we're going to spin this crankshaft and then take a look at it again all right so now we've added simulated weight in front simulated weight in the back what the machine's asking us to do and I'll tell you a top secret thing here 
uh, the machine is giving you a reference number. It is never, I have never yet in 25 years had a machine tell me put 25 grams right here and I put 25 grams right there and it was exactly right. I was all done. It never does that. Always sneak up on this stuff. Uh, you are measuring twice, cutting once. All right, so go ahead and we're gonna re-spin this thing. It's gonna rate, run it right back up to 500 RPM. It's measuring as we're looking at it. It's analyzing the data that it's collecting. And here in a second, it'll pop up what it is out of balance. Now we can see that it is still eight grams out of balance in the rear and six grams out of balance in the front. So I know now that we're gonna add a little bit more material there. I'm not gonna show you how to how we get this thing all the way done because all you're gonna do is what end up watching me drill holes and press a piece of material in. So we're gonna add a little bit of weight there. When we do the final balance on this, add a little bit of weight there. Then we have to re-spin it all up after we put the final piece in there, after we TIG it in, after everything's there. Then we have to come in and do it all over again and check this thing all out. Now, one last thing. So we've gone through a bob weight. We've gone through how you balance that crankshaft, what the numbers all mean. Uh, this eight grams and six grams. Remember me talking about this piece of paper weighing eight gram or weighing a gram, basically. This stupid post-it note. <clears throat> Let me ask you, what do you, and, and we know that we can put an overbalance in it or underbalance in it, which was gonna be about 20 grams either way. Do you really think this will probably get everybody's panties in a bunch that are overthinkers that work at uh, AutoZone and don't actually build engines or whatever they do? Uh, do you think that really matters? I'm here to tell you, it don't. You know what's going on inside this crankshaft and inside the crankcase when there's oil flat splashing around, oil coming through the connecting rod, getting shed off, all the windage, everything that's all there. It is a pretty amazing deal. So we can just put the, I was gonna actually show you something there with like even just spraying this thing down with oil. It just, everything changes. So we're doing, this is the pragmatic way of doing things. I'm showing you not just theory, of what's supposed to be doing of what's supposed to be done i'm showing you this stuff works because we do it every day i prove it out all the time so i want to help you always understand how things actually work and how things are actually done so anyways that's how this all works and how balancing works what you're looking for if you have any other questions but this this should give you a good idea of what uh you know, when we have to take this crankshaft in and out of the machine a couple times, prices go up to put Mallory metal in, to put that heavy metal in. If it's a quick, easy balance job, only takes us maybe an hour or two hours at the most. Uh, big balance jobs like this, where we're taking Mallory metal in and out, it could take a few hours in order to get this thing right. So that's why it costs a lot more too. So anyways, I think you got a real good idea of how balancing works. I'm Steve at Steve Tech. Take her easy.